Good afternoon, everyone. You're all very welcome along this afternoon to Manufacturing NI's session alongside the Makers Alliance and Invest Northern Ireland. You're all very welcome. I frequently when ministers come into the office, they're asked or they do ask their officials, but what does business want? What does business need? What are their priorities? And a couple of years ago, I, the then chair of Invest NI and myself established what's called the Makers Alliance. And essentially that was about bringing together strategic leaders of manufacturing businesses in Northern Ireland to kind of ensure that they debated along each along with each other and came out with a roadmap and a plan that directed government, both the Department for the Economy and others here in Northern Ireland, to the things that our manufacturers need, the things that our makers need in order to create the environment which will allow them to grow and to succeed and as a result to allow the Northern Ireland economy to grow and for people to have good sustainable jobs. Very pleased to say that this afternoon joined by the Joint Chief Executives of the Makers Alliance, Mark Nodder and Mark Huddleston, who will take you through where we've got to in terms of the Makers Alliance and specifically the new plan which has been developed and which has been shared with the economy minister and has formed part of his economic plan as he uh, has his term of office over the next three years. This is an open session. Uh, we will be sharing a recording of the session and the slides after the event. So do keep an eye out for those. But we would really welcome your input. We'd really welcome your, uh, your questions. Along the top of your screen, you should see both the chat function and the Q&A function. Do feel free as we go through the presentations today to, to put into those, set, into those sections uh, whatever questions you may have, whatever clarity you require. Uh, and I'll put those questions to our speakers later on uh, in the afternoon. Very pleased to say uh, that Mark and Mark have joined us, but also Kelly Murphy from Invest NI. But we're going to begin with uh, Mark Nodder in terms of taking us through where the Makers Alliance have got to and their action plan, Vision with Action, which is a delivery plan on behalf of manufacturing in Northern Ireland. Mark, over to yourself. Thank you so much, Stephen, and uh, welcome everybody. Thank you for taking some time out to, to listen to, to our little webinar today. Makers Alliance was formed really by industry for industry. It was always intended to be an independent industry-led advisory body and, and frankly to bring a healthy dose of reality and challenge to, to government and to policy writers, to academia, to be, to be relevant and accessible to manufacturing and also to ensure that government funding for manufacturing uh, through the city and regional growth deals is wisely invested. Okay, Mark. So manufacturing really matters. You know, the world moves on, but manufacturing continues to be the very bedrock of our local economy. Of course, it's changing. Our traditional industries are modernizing and modernizing rapidly. And at the same time, new sectors are emerging and, and growing. But it remains that foundation. And I think without manufacturing, Northern Ireland would really lose its industrial compass. Um, Frankly, I think we've become adrift and we forget uh, what built us up and what made us uh, what we are today. When you look at the statistics, for instance, that actually um, drive manufacturing in Northern Ireland, you can see straight away how important uh, manufacturing is within our economy. For example, it drives 51% of our export sales. Hugely important. Direct jobs, 100,000 directly employed in manufacturing. In total, the, the sector sustains over 250,000. It's huge. But crucially, and I think this is really the, the characteristic of our, of our manufacturing landscape, 96% of our manufacturers are, are SMEs. And so that's the, the background against which we develop, first of all, our strategic plan, and then subsequently the delivery plan that we're going to talk a little bit about today. So there really wasn't uh, an industrial strategy in place and in play for, for Northern Ireland until two or three years ago, where we took time out with our panel and through a wide consultation, uh, and we produced this document, Making a Better Future. 
And what it really encapsulates is a vision of Northern Ireland as a great place to set up and grow a manufacturing business. So that's our aspiration, to actually see that there's a vibrant landscape for manufacturers, a real ecosystem of support with the aim of transforming productivity and competitiveness, and to ensure that our SMEs, remember 96% of our manufacturers are SMEs, all benefit from the available support that's coming on stream, including the new innovation centers planned through the city and regional growth deals. So in that strategy, Mark and I organized our thinking around six themes of skills and labor, competitiveness and productivity, innovation and technology, supply chain, energy and the environment, and infrastructure. So from that, that base of, of, of a vision, we have in the last uh, 12 months developed uh, a delivery plan, which really takes the vision hopefully into action. So this has been the next phase of our activity, drilling down into those um, strategic themes to a level where we can actually translate the need for action into, into very, very clear milestones, ownership, impact, and so forth. Um, we've been working very closely with our, with our friends in Invest and also with the Department of the Economy because I think it's really important that when, when there's a mass of plans out there, they actually do knit together, there is alignment and they, they actually make sense. But all the while, um, it's to retain our independence. So this little quotation, which you'll find in the document, I think for me anyway, sums up our philosophy. Um, Joel Barker, incidentally, is um, a futurist. He was really the first uh, to explore the concept of paradigm shifts in the, in the world of business and disruption. And he's a massive proponent of the power of vision. Okay, Mark. Thanks, Mark, and thanks, Stephen. Um, to just just build on what Mark just said, then we, we have those six individual areas that, that we covered. What Mark and I are going to do over the next few minutes here is, is pass between each of them here uh, and just give you a quick insight into um, what each of them covers. And it is trying to build on that vision and action change in, in the world of manufacturing in Northern Ireland. But we can't do that without the input of industry. And, and what we did in preparing this document is test some of the thoughts that we had with our colleagues on the on the Makers Alliance panel and, and beyond that. And we will come back to that later on because we're going to have to do that again with the next stage. These actions are very high level. They, they don't cover every single detail. And what we're just going to do now over the next couple of minutes is give you a flavour of, of one or two of the actions under each of those six headings. Um, starting with, with skills and labour and across all six, we, we had a vision statement that you can see it there on the screen in front of you. And we had a range of usually with five or six um, actions linked to those there. And what we've done is try to identify partners, the impact and the time frame that they're going to, to, to be carried out in, under. And as we move into the detail of the delivery plan of the next few months, that's going to be we're going to look at resources, cost and, and how we did actually move for those forward on the ground. So to give you an example of one that we where we think is, is critical to the skills and labour piece is building on the collaborative network activity um, that councils, Invest NI, and, and the three key groups that have formed over the last couple of years, uh, Manufacturing Task Force in Mid and East Antrim, the mega um, group, which probably is, is, is the most well known out of them all in Mid Ulster, and, and the GEMX group up in the Northwest. And when we take the work that they have done, they, they've, they've opened up many avenues into schools and, and started to open up the pipeline for employment and recognition of the value of advanced manufacturing here in Northern Ireland. And what we want to do is see those collaborative networks built on, grown, established in the long term, create greater gender balance in our sector, highlight the opportunities that there are across the sector, not just in the core technical roles, but the advanced manufacturing delivers so much whenever we look at the, the export opportunities, the need for sales and business development folk through the supply chain management. There is all sorts of different avenues and activities that can bring many from our communities in. And as Mark mentioned earlier, we're a very community focused um, business. And that links to wider activities that you'll see then under this particular area around skills foresighting and have an industry driven training where industry is at the forefront. And while the minister has developed a, a skills fund and that's a very welcome development, we think that needs grown and, and developed. And one of the key actions again that we're looking for is that the apprenticeship levy is um, changed in a way that allows businesses in Northern Ireland to use their apprenticeship levy costs towards actually delivering skills in their own businesses. 
So the next theme um, and real driver of the strategy was around competitiveness and productivity. And of course, much talk these, these days about productivity and the Minister of the Economy has made it one of the fundamental elements of his vision to improve productivity. But as you know, as manufacturers, talk to each individual manufacturer about what productivity means and you're gonna get very different answers. But all of us, I think, that come from that background know that ultimately it translates into competitiveness and success in the market. And for, for us, developing, product, uh, developing productivity tools, but also improving competitiveness is absolutely vital. And not just measuring ourselves by how good we are compared to our competitors, let's say locally or nationally, but whether we can actually compete on the international stage and, and actually develop our exports. So in this area of the, uh, the plan, our, our focus and the detail is to try and ensure that all manufacturers benefit from the city and regional growth deals and not just you know the top 70 80 companies but actually the doors are open for the improvement of productivity and competitiveness for all uh, and, and, and both industry and academia and the hosts of these innovation centers all have to work hard and reach out to accomplish that and we also need to agree a kind of a start point a standardized assessment a benchmarking so that we can all look at ourselves and decide okay how do we compare with other people that are doing what we're doing? That, uh, that allows us to have some perspective uh, and understanding of our start point as we actually get on the development journey. Uh, and and that, those tools are, are starting to become available. There are a number that Invest and I have used through the, the, the Siri assessment in partnership with the, the AMIC people at Queen's. And there are others that have been used uh, nationally and, and will be rolled out in Northern Ireland in the next two or three years. But either either we need to get ourselves to that, that common base from which we start to develop, if you like, an escalator of productivity. Mark. Thanks, Mark. Um, I proudly come from a family SME uh, background, and it was always something you were prepared to do, which is take more risk than maybe you, you, you were otherwise advised by your financial advisors or others to take. Uh, and one of those areas that you tend to do that in is maybe looking at where the next innovation and opportunity is for your business but that comes with its pearls sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't work and the landscape around innovation and technology is moving so fast it's actually becoming harder now for many of our really important smes um particularly those that have, are going through those early growth phases maybe have went through startup or into that 10 to 30 person business now and, and looking to take those next big steps uh, and so SMEs can often struggle now with the complexity of the funding landscape, complexity of the, the technology itself. And one of the things we're very much calling for is for the simplification and of that landscape within the innovation and technology piece to make it easier for businesses to access the support because there is actually no shortage of support at the moment. And as Mark's alluded to, we have these huge city and growth deal projects, which at the moment for a lot of our SMEs, we recognize and talking to them find that um, quite a challenge to understand what is the value to me as a business. So we want to see that made easier by government, by Invest NI, by Innovate UK and all the other Intertrade Ireland and all the other partners within the landscape to bring that together and, and use the funding that's there to maximise the impact for SMEs, to build them up. Mark's just talked around, around productivity and competitiveness. These businesses are, are the heartbeat of our communities. These are the heartbeat of our, of our regional place based activity in Northern Ireland. But if SMEs don't have the capacity and the capability to engage, then we're going to miss out on the opportunities that design and made smarter technologies as we even move from I 4.0 and I 5.0 and beyond can bring. So we must recognize the effort that's being made, but also bring ways of delivering that and, and you know there is there's money continuing to flow into this while the UK government is doing a, a funding uh, and spending review which will challenge the wider UK investment in R&D and, and in innovation locally here you know for the first time in a long time government is investing in innovation funding at a level that hasn't been seen before so in the current um, climate the, the minister has made an, an extra four million available for higher education innovation fund, you might say, well, what's that got to do with me as a business? That's about knowledge exchange. That's the opportunity to take the learning out of our universities and out of our institutions and apply them in your business, whether that's through a, a knowledge transfer partnership or something similar. And this is where then the reality of where we can create those touch points for business to grow and excel. 
and deliver on the exciting ideas and solutions that they often have that just need something to take them to the next level. So that's where we look, one of the areas we're looking to go with with innovation and technology. Thanks, Mark. And the next thing was supply chain. And, and most of our companies, most of our manufacturers are in, are in supply chain or are seeking to, 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 to grow into supply chain. And the objective, of course, is, is to make our supply chain companies high performing, agile, resilient, and hopefully competitive to become globally attractive as places to do business with, as places to invest. Um, we feel there's a great opportunity to develop um, what's available for SMEs in terms of prospects with international customers. We really need to play to our strengths where we now find ourselves. And, and as Mark has just said, there's a lot of help available potentially for, for SMEs to actually achieve these objectives. I mean, at one point, Mark and I did an assessment about two and a half, three years ago when we started on this, on this work. We found that there was something like 200 plus separate programs, interventions, offerings to support companies being delivered by over 40 agencies in Northern Ireland. So very fractured, very competitive, very kind of duplicating, very, very confusing for, for somebody running a smaller company. So to really emphasize that point, and we're working very strongly with Invest and with, with the department on this, to really try and simplify that uh, and make the roadmap much, much easier to navigate to, to access the right kind of help. Um, so, so that's our objective there. And, and, and we feel it, it's, not a, it's not a short journey as indeed many of these um, themes are gonna be, but we need to make a start uh, on, on this simplification um, over the next six to nine months. And, and I think we have the ears of Invest and I on that. And you'll be hearing from, from Kelly later about how we're trying to align what we're calling for from industry with what the agencies are able to deliver on industry's behalf. Thanks, Mark. When we first started out, the, 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 the sequence that we're doing, and this is going back two or three years ago, the sequence that we're doing these particular um, key vision areas in, is in the order they were, were uh, and are being presented here. However, over the last 12 months, 18 months, it would be fair to say that energy and environment, and particularly the energy element, have, have moved up the priority list for manufacturers across Northern Ireland, um, probably equal to skills and labour now at the very top of the challenges that, that we face as makers, um, and particularly um, the input cost around energy continues to rise, and, and Stephen and his team at Manufacturing and I continue to, to champion um, the challenges there and address the, the issues we have around those costs. Uh, and in recognising that and talking to our businesses, they obviously come from a very dispersed um, uh, uh, part of the province here and across Northern Ireland, and, and therefore not all are sitting in those urban environments or close coupled to other businesses. Um, but we do believe that regardless of, of where the business is, there is now significant opportunity through micro production and storage uh, coming forward in terms of technology and also then to aggregate that. And obviously that creates certain challenges. Businesses that we've worked with and we know very well have put um, anaerobic digestion um, facilities in. They've put um, solar um, PV type uh, capability and some have invested in wind turbines and other other renewable sources of energy and, and have all been challenged in getting grid connection and then the challenge of well how is that going to work how long is that going to take then storage of excess power and how that could be leveraged and, and utilized and we've heard from businesses from Fermanagh across to, to Belfast uh, and everywhere in between talking about those challenges and we believe this is something that you know government and um, the uh, energy network providers really have to, to get to grips with. And therefore, what we're saying is, is there should be a clear strategy coming from the department and from others linked to the department around how we enable businesses to um, be micro producers, add value back into the grid, but also store that or else or act in a cooperative type manner to aggregate the opportunity. And there, I know there's ideas and certainly the work done out of Invest and I, uh, led by Eugene and the team there around the, the, the different councils are creating opportunities there. How do we get more businesses involved in that? And how do we find a way to aggregate the opportunity that exists there, whether that's, for example, around the M12, Carn Industrial Estate or other areas they got there, and then expand that across Northern Ireland to maximize the impact for businesses, improve their resilience, but also reduce the cost 
input costs because the, again, while we can do all we can around productivity and innovation, we also can't have escalating uh, utility costs going alongside that. We need to see them stabilized and reduced where possible. And the, the last of our, our, our six themes and drivers was around infrastructure. And there's a case of the sublime and the ridiculous here, really. The objective is to, is to build capability and capacity of appropriate infrastructure for, for manufacturing where it's needed in the places where our manufacturers are located. And we have infrastructure deficits. We all know that across the region. We have areas that are woefully short of industrial land, uh, transport, communications, even utilities, power, and, and in some places, even water. Um, notwithstanding the fact that we all aspire to have good 5G connections, broadband connections. So this isn't gonna be something that's that's solved overnight, but, we have to make a start point somewhere. These infrastructure deficits are, and frankly, the planning systems and processes that often go along with them hold us back. They hold back in, in investment, and that's 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 not good for progress. So one of the things we're calling for in our in our delivery plan is a task force to assess as a matter of urgency these infrastructure deficits to report back very quickly within six to nine months and actually to get a confirmed action plan uh, from uh, those elements of the executive that can make a difference for, for, for action within three years. Um, it's, it's, it's hygiene factors in many respects, um, but if we're trying to create this landscape where all manufacturers can thrive, then we need that kind of equality, if you like, of infrastructure and facility to enable or companies, irrespective of where they're located and what, where they want to grow, to be able to thrive. Okay, so one of the kind of concepts, I guess, that we, we're, we're putting forward um, to try and wrap a lot of these elements up uh, in the delivery plan is, is a, the concept of a, a productivity escalator or productivity and competitiveness escalator. And potentially, it would look something like this. So you know, a fairly simple, readily understandable, hopefully easy to navigate um, range of support uh, delivered in a coordinated fashion by the various agencies. Uh, five steps, you know, starting with that assessment and benchmarking so that we know where we all stand, going through data capture, adopting um, uh, digital processes and, and improved productivity, uh, harnessing technology and process improvement, and then starting to move to the larger scale development and, and, and deployment of all of the learnings. Um, and we've tried to, to match those to some of the uh, innovation centers and the offerings that are starting to appear through the city and regional growth deals. Uh, for instance, um, we talk about AMIC and SIDRA. AMIC is the Queen's hosted um, Advanced Man Manufacturing and Innovation Center. Uh, SIDRA is the Ulster University hosted Centre for Industrial Digitalization, Robotics and Automation. And they both have a fantastic role potentially to play to enable our companies to move up this escalator. But along the way, there are various uh, tools available through Invest and I. There are tools available at, at a national level. Um, and there are already opportunities for companies to engage at all levels. And we recognise that not everybody starts on the first a step of the escalator, some will come to it with a degree of maturity, uh, but this is something we all need to address. So um, building on what Mark's just said and given the, the insight there, we recognise that the businesses that we have talked to and, and many, many more that we haven't had time or, or, or the opportunity to engage with yet are working very, very hard. And all this is trying to do is crystallise this into a concept Many businesses are doing this in many different ways at the moment. Many will be at different stages of maturity around this. Some will maybe not even recognize that they are actually already doing this. And this is about aggregating that and, and bringing that together um, in a way that doesn't take away from the, the unique selling proposition that any individual business has, um, but recognizing there are elements that we uh, collectively can do better when we're working together. And I think that's one of the things across all of what Mark and I have, have put together. There is the opportunity to collaborate and share knowledge without taking away from the unique proposition that each of the businesses have. We also recognize that this is just one part 
of a very large moving feast around productivity and competitiveness. Um, a key part of that around any of what we've just discussed is for the leaders in those business to have those assurance that they are good leaders, and many of them are, but maybe don't understand how to draw those different elements that they're working on together. And giving them the space and the time and, and the understanding to do that is really important. The wider skills landscape, having those wider skills within the organization at certain points of time, it is really critical that you're investing in apprenticeships. Other times it may be that you start to bring graduates into your business. I'm speaking from my own perspective, then sometimes from a family business perspective, it's also about when to bring the right external people into the family business at the right level, not only just to act as challenge, but to help understand actually how good you are or how good you could actually be in the future. So there are so many different elements to this. When you adopt technology, it sometimes seems like it's very daunting. This again is about trying to help understand that it's not just about investing in a, a large software package, et cetera, but how to actually use those. And that's certainly in my experience in the past and uh, where the knowledge transfer programs, as you look to digitize some of your engineering processes and other things and virtualize uh, those activities, the real learning can come from what the universities have already done to try and test that. And they will have graduates who are looking for that ability to go out in the industry to deliver that. And this is an opportunity for the universities or the FE colleges to work in partnership with you to deliver that. So there's so many opportunities here. As again, this is a concept that Mark and I believe from the engagement can work. It builds in other elements of activity across Northern Ireland, but also more globally as well, an opportunity to really drive success and productivity and competitiveness. And again, just gives a bit more detail and there's more information about this within the document that, that we're publishing today. What we also recognize that this is about a journey and um, there are going to be a lots of twists and turns. We could have put a mountain there in there and said there's going to be ups and downs as well. And we say this is a longitudinal piece of work. This isn't going to happen quickly. Um, we recognize also at the moment there are lots of plans uh, coming out. Programme for Government announced yesterday that the Minister has announced his economic vision. We have the sectoral plans, Invest in I strategic plans coming out. We now have the UK Government and the European Union both looking at new industrial plans. Uh, and we've got a raft of different activities. And every business has its own focus, its own challenges. Um, and therefore, what's going to happen here now is, is Mark and I want to take up the mantra of, of getting back out on the road again, engaging with our colleagues in uh, government, but more importantly, um, engaging with um, our, our wider industry stakeholders to understand where we can do the right thing at the right time. What is the key priorities within the actions? Are there new emerging ones that we haven't uh, seen and developed that? So that's that's how we intend to take this forward. We tend to try and move that as quickly as we can, based on the two of us being two uh, part-time joint uh, members of, of, of Makers Alliance and, and there's only so much time that we can get out on the road and do those things but we want to do that as quickly as possible and present the plan and one of the key things we're saying is we're not looking for extra money and that might sound odd what, why would you say that Mark you know everybody's talking about being short of money genuinely we believe that joining the dots and creating greater additionality between the money that's there can harness a greater output for business so it can and if the inputs are simplified and understood, then business can engage more quickly and more rapidly. And that's why then the next piece that we're saying is we've got three sort of key takeaways, three key elements that we want to leave with you here just before we go here today to say, this is where we're going, just to give a clear understanding to, to the various stakeholders that have joined us here in the webinar before we hand over to, to Kelly to talk about the work of Invest in I around this. And I suppose the first thing we're saying is very clearly rationalize the offering and make it simpler for business to access that offering. Um, we, as Mark mentioned there, and uh, we've got so many different offerings and on different things earlier. Um, a piece of work around the innovation landscape looked at over 120 different interventions for SMEs in particular on innovation. Um, a lot of them being offered in the same way from different sources. So how can our, our key institutions, Invest NI, Intertrade Ireland, Innovate UK, Invest NI's, other partners um, that work around this on, on the fringes are, are two yeah, universities are physically based here, Open University as well. And the wider six FE colleges broadened out even into to our, our um, colleagues at CAFRI as well. How do they take what they have and maximize the impact of that by potentially working more closely together uh, themselves to deliver that activity? 
The second thing we're looking at is, is real comprehensive industry engagement. And that's a two way piece. And where Mark and I try to act is we I try to act as a conduit uh, alongside Stephen for industry, giving us information that we can then feed back into government and the government institutions, but also ensure that the government institutions are listening to industry's needs very clearly and are testing maybe some of the ideas and concepts they have. It's very easy to potentially get uh, and we we have often been close to following this trap. You get quite academic and, and, and paper driven in this. And when reality hits the road, then you find it's very different. You want to get out there and engage with business and understand, will that policy make a difference? And that's not about running lots of pilot programs. That's about something that's really tangible. The industry collectively is saying support that and drive success from that. Thirdly, um, it's about a long term commitment to the growth and sustainability of our manufacturing sector. And that is about having an export oriented sector, sector that understands the challenges of net zero, a sector that is looking globally at the opportunities, not just insular here locally or even just on the island here. And sometimes that's the right place to look. But there are so many opportunities and, and I, I come from the background of aerospace and defense. So that is a very globalized in industry, but I don't think there's a single sector now that hasn't got that global bent to it. So how can our manufacturers take up those opportunities to be part of really important global supply chains, but also build resilience into those supply chains uh, for success? So a lot to do. Um, building an ecosystem for success uh, is not an overnight thing. This is going to take uh, a sustained long term commitment. We know that. Uh, the kind of life cycle that really transcends uh, politics. And that said, of course, there are some short term priorities that we will apply our energy to and, and, and we'll make a lot of noise about. Um, because frankly, you know, we can't allow the investment that's coming in innovation centers through the city and regional growth fields to be just frittered away. One of the things that Makers Alliance will, be, will ensure is that the planning of government agencies, councils, universities, college is properly aligned and actually meets industrial needs. The lesson, I guess, that we've 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 learned in the last two or three years, particularly as we've we've engaged with with really the entire manufacturing community, is we're so much stronger when we do collaborate. When we as manufacturers share concerns, share problems, share potential solutions. So we we're big, we're big believers, Mark and I, in the collaborative growth programs, the networks, the clusters, and a lot of good work that uh, Linda Jameson and the team and Invest and I has done to to set these in motion. So organizations, MEGA, the Manufacturing Task Force, and GEMX in the Northwest need to be encouraged. They need to be sustainably funded. Um, so we, we're, very, um, we're very pleased uh, to be in the position where we can actually put these proposals on the table. We really welcome the engagement of, of all of you in terms of taking them forward. Um, if Makers Alliance is not a closed shop, we have a fantastic panel great representation from industry, a superb chair in the shape of Sir Michael Ryan. And of course, we've got membership there also from the two universities, from Invest NI. Um, we, we have the councils represented and, and Stephen from Manufacturing NI. But it's not a closed shop. And we do welcome engagement for all those who want to put a little bit of time and energy in towards contributing to the, the overall future for manufacturers. Thanks, Stephen. And I guess we're moving to Kelly. Thanks, Mark and Mark. Yeah, uh, I'm going to move on now to have a, a response to what's just been said uh, in terms of Invest NI, who are one of the kind of critical delivery agents on behalf of manufacturers, uh, but also on behalf of government themselves. Uh, so Kelly Murphy is uh, the sectoral manager for advanced manufacturing and engineering, uh, a very good friend of manufacturing. Many people online will know Kelly. Uh, from her her time with Invest NI. Kelly, we'll hand over to yourself for some response to what you've just heard, uh, and then we'll do a Q&A just after that. So people do feel free to add some questions into the chat or the Q&A function in the meantime. That's great. Thanks, Stephen, and thanks to, to Mark and Mark for, for taking us through um, your delivery plan. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how Invest and I supports business, the type of support we provide to business, and then I'm going to focus on um, the Makers Alliance six key strategic themes and specifically um, the support then that Invest and I provides under those themes. So next slide, please.
So we work directly and indirectly with businesses across Northern Ireland. Our approach to supporting businesses is based on three key elements. We provide information and advice directly and through a range of information such as information services such as NI Business Info. We provide support to people wanting to set up their own business and help new and existing businesses grow and move into new markets. And we provide tailored support to businesses that could make the greatest contribution to increasing productivity, innovation and export growth in Northern Ireland. Because our resources are limited, we use them to support those businesses that can make the biggest contribution to the economy. But regardless of the size of your business or the sector in which you operate, our business support team is on hand to offer free tailored advice and guidance signpost you to the most appropriate startup support for your business, provide information on all of Northern Ireland's business support organisations that could support your business. And I have the telephone number on the screen and you can also contact them through our website. So moving on um, to the support that we have for business. So to help your business compete successfully and function efficiently, we offer support across a variety of areas. Our support is tailored to your needs and includes advice, mentoring and finance. I'm going to focus here specifically on our extensive support for exporting, um, as we'll cover a lot of the other areas when we focus on the, the strategic themes of Makers Alliance. So Invest and I can support you throughout your export journey with research, guidance and assistance from our local and international exports located in Northern Ireland and in 24 locations across the world. Our in-market teams can provide tailor-made assistance to help you identify export opportunities and to navigate the challenges of entering a new overseas market. Invest and I's in-market trade advisors can assist with market scoping, lead generation, partner and or distribution research, client introductions, B2B meetings, inward visits to Northern Ireland. And I would specifically point you towards our website where you'll find the Spotlight on tutorial series, which provides information on key export markets that offer great opportunities for Northern Ireland companies and provides advice and support on how businesses can help enter the market with help from us and other stakeholders. And as well as export assistance and grant assistance, Invest and I provides a range of funding solutions under the banner of Access to Finance. Totaling almost 170 million, there are five funds spanning a deal size range of 10,000 to 2 million pounds, which offer support to SMEs across both debt and equity markets. And full details of our access to finance funding is available on our website. Next slide, please, Connor. So in terms of advanced manufacturing and what that looks like within the, the Invest Northern Ireland family, as well as client executives and our regional office network across Northern Ireland, our multi-sector and our scaling teams. Invest NI's manufacturing client relationships are mainly managed through our advanced manufacturing and engineering division of which I work. This is made up of six sector teams focused on our core manufacturing sectors, materials handling, aerospace and defence, road transport, construction, energy and power, life sciences, and of course, their supply chains. The green economy team also sits within the division, as well as my role, which cuts across the wider AME division, as well as having a specific focus on our emerging space sector. So we'll now look specifically at Invest in I support offerings in line with Makers Alliance six strategic thing, themes. We'll begin with skills and labour. So we've heard from, from Mark and Mark, Makers Alliance vision is growth through increasing the capability of our people, leadership development and the creation of a pipeline of talent to fuel expansion. Invest in I's leadership and capability solutions provide Northern Ireland businesses with the opportunity to develop leadership skills and improve the business for future growth. Through our various leadership programmes, there are four in total, including the newly launched International Sales Leadership Programme, we offer a combination of learning, challenge and support to help improve and develop your leadership capability in order to lead more effectively, to develop a, an, a more ambitious strategic plan for business growth, to create a more strategic and cohesive top team, to develop the capability of your people and operations, 
and to grow your business through innovation, investment, talent development, operational efficiency and exploration of new markets. We offer free training needs analysis workshops, which offer advice on identifying the training needs of an organization and also advise on how to develop cost and manage an effective training plan. We have a wide, a wide range of financial support offerings for SMEs and large companies to upskill and improve skills for invest in client companies. We encourage companies to collaborate. We've heard how important collaboration is from, from, from makers. And our experience is that companies here are very good at collaboration. We run workshops across, uh, sorry, about collaborative working and can signpost you to further sources of advice and guidance. We can link your business with other businesses, colleges, universities or organisations so that you can explore ways to exploit new market or research opportunities. Within manufacturing and funded by our collaborative network programme, we have helped to establish three of Northern Ireland's most successful collaborative organisations, MEGA, Manufacturing Task Force and GEMX. And we also support and have funded Makers Alliance since its inception in 2021. We'll now look at competitiveness and productivity. So the Makers Alliance vision here is closing the productivity gap through skills, innovation and technology and becoming more export orientated and globally competitive. Our operational excellence solutions support can help your business develop competitive advantage by facilitating improvements to productivity and in turn profitability. Typically, our support aims to reduce non-essential work in the business by up to 25%. Our team of operational excellence coaches will work with your business to maximize your available resources so you can become more competitive, efficient and effective, making the work easier, better, faster and cheaper. We do this through delivering work-based, workshop-based training, specialist advice, and best practice events showing how to get the best out of available resources. We help to identify and facilitate productivity improvement opportunities and projects, support your business's journey to embed a culture of continuous improvement, and we focus on developing your internal capability to facilitate sustainable improvements helping you to integrate new concepts, tools and techniques that can significantly improve many areas of your business. The specialist advisory support is open to all Invest in I clients and access to our online resources, general advice and attendance at some workshops is available to the wider business community. We'll now look at innovation and technology. So the Makers Alliance vision here is to be leaders in the creation and use of design and made smarter technologies, advanced materials, robotics and automation, enabling our, our manufacturers to compete in the inter international arena. Invest in I is committed to helping manufacturers increase their market share, scale up and become successful innovators. We offer a wide range of funding and solutions that could improve business competitiveness encourage further R&D for your company and benefit the local economy. Some of our offerings are listed on your screen and you can find a full range of support um, on our website. If you're an SME and have an innovation project that could lead to the development of a new or improved product, service, business model or process, if it will create value in your business, produce new profits or help grow the business, then an innovation voucher could help support this. And our call for applications to innovation vouchers has just reopened and will close at 3 p.m. on Friday, the 27th of September. Our techn techn technical development incentive scheme provides local SMEs with funding of up to £15,000 towards cost of technical service providers, that is test houses, product development, consultants, certification bodies, IP specialists, etc to implement innovative solutions. Our experienced team of in-house technical advisors can provide guidance on a wide range of areas from quality management systems to IP and industry and product standards. Our wide range of grant for R&D support can help your idea, help develop your idea into a successful product process or service ready for commercialization. 
We can provide you with advice and support, which includes grant funding to help plan an R&D project and prepare an application for support to fund your R&D project and support and advise you while planning for applications or applying for applications to Innovate UK and other, and other funders. And we'll now look at supply chain. So Makers Alliance vision here is the development of high performing agile and resilient supply chains, which are outward looking and globally competitive. Our supply chain solutions offering provides a three step graduated framework of support. A team of supply chain professionals will provide specialist advisory support to help businesses identify supply chain risks and appropriate mitigations reduce costs, improve competitiveness, identify supply chain opportunities and develop supply chain capability. As part of a step three, financial assistance towards the salary costs of an employee dedicated to supply chain may also be available depending on the business's circumstances. Supply chain solutions support is open to any manufacturing or tradable service business which meets the following criteria. They're based and operating in Northern Ireland, they manufacture products or provide internationally traded services, have a total supply chain spend of at least £100,000 in one of the last three, sorry, two financial years. Um, they can be able to demonstrate how your supply chain has been adversely impacted due to a disruption in production, uh, sale or distribution of products and have or will reach a turnover of £250,000 per annum in the next five years and achieve at least 25% of those sales outside, outside Northern Ireland. And we'll now move on to energy and environment. Makers Alliance vision is to harness our natural resources, develop and improve technologies and work with partners to deliver sustainable manufacturing and environmental improvements. We provide expert advice to Northern Ireland businesses to help develop business specific waste management strategies. Our tailored advice, support and funding can help your business operate more efficiently, minimise waste, reduce costs and improve your impact on the environment. Support includes Energy Efficiency Capital Grant, which offers support to buy and install energy efficiency equipment. Resource Efficiency Capital Grant to provide investment support for resource efficient equipment. Resource Matching Service to manage waste and reduce costs. Sustainability Reports to assess, measure and monitor environmental impact and performance. And our Technical Consultancy for Bespoke Energy and Resource Efficiency Strategies and Recommendations. And the final of the, the, the Makers um, Six strategic themes is infrastructure. The vision is a place-based capability and capacity led by industry in partnership with local government and academia. But Invesa knows that having the right home for your business is important for, for both growth and productivity. And our property solutions team can help you look for premises, access a comprehensive database of both public and private sector properties, office, commercial and industrial, buy or rent, invest in nice service sites or buildings. And even if you want your own premises, we may be able to provide financial support by way of grant or loan towards construction costs. And finally, thank you very much for listening. I would encourage you to sign up to our two minute update email. This is where we send out information and news about our products and schemes and any other um, relevant information for businesses across Northern Ireland. And I'm going to hand back to Stephen. Kelly, thanks for that. I much appreciate it. I think it's safe to say that there's lots of programmes that Invest continue to run that are relevant for manufacturers and their, their supply chain. And I but I'll start with a kind of basic question for yourself as we get into the Q&A. What's the best route for people to begin the conversation with Invest NI about an innovation project, an energy project, a resource efficiency project or whatever? What's the what's the quickest, simplest, easiest route in for those people? So, um, if they're an Invest NI client already, Stephen, their, their, their best route is obviously speaking to their client executive or their client manager, number one. If it's a manufacturing project, I'm happy to speak to them in the first instance. Um, if they're not currently an Invest NI client, um, but they have a project that is of 
is, is of um, strategic interest and also that they could meet our eligibility criteria within the time frame um, that's laid out on our website. Our business info team is the, is the first board of call. There's a contact us button on our website and also the um, telephone number for our business info team is, is there on the, on the slides and also on the website. That's great, Kelly. Thanks very much. I'll, I'll come to the two marks. I mean, you, you kind of summarised it towards the end of the presentation with the, the three takeaways, which is about, this is about trying to rationalise and make simpler the support that's available and the access and how people access that support uh, for their manufacturing business. Uh, it's about government comprehensively engaging with manufacturing. So actually listening to what manufacturers need and trying to uh, provide the intervention there where required. Uh, and it's about not changing the world today, but it's going to take a bit of time to get this done. Now, obviously, we we saw the draft programme for government that was published yesterday. The Minister for the Economy published its own his own work plan for the next year. Uh, the current executive runs until 2027, but this will take a, a longer period in time. What do we what do we need to do to make this sticky? Uh, bearing in mind we could have a new minister in 2027, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What do you think that the Makers Alliance has done here with this report to kind of make this long-term commitment one that will actually stick and the environment improves across that long term? Uh, so I think what, one of the things that the minister has, has a, definitely a key priority on, and, and Stephen, it's part of the reason we're, 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 you created Makers in many ways, was that clustering effect and the, and the importance of clusters. And um, back in the day, Kelly and I were both involved, in, particularly in the, the aerospace cluster and how that led to significant growth in our, in our aerospace sector in Northern Ireland. We have key players in Spirit, you know, soon to become Airbus and possibly Boeing. We have Collins Aerospace and Kilkeel and, and Thompson's in um, Portadown and then the, the vast, you know, cross sector of of businesses in there. I think if we can harness the breadth of the whole advanced manufacturing sector here now, as an engine for economic growth and get that message across and keep that message um, to the forefront with officials uh, and our politicians, then that's how it becomes sticky. That acts as a, a magnet then, I think, in many ways to attract talent, to attract capital into the sector, to attract researchers, which are so important through to the new companies that we'll need, whether that's local you know, generation of new companies. And, and then we've got you know, the, the building and the collaborative networks that we already have. How do we scale that? Um, how do we accelerate the activity um, aimed at, at, at innovation and growth that's actually creating an impact for those businesses and deal with those common challenges that we have. And I think if we start dealing with those common challenges, and that goes back, Stephen, to one of those early mantras you had around uh, business rates, when we find those things and work together on them, as Mark said earlier, we're much stronger. Uh, and you've been a key advocate of that, and many on, on this will, will recognise that and other activities. And I think when we find those two or three key things here, and that's what we're going to do. Well, we've got you know lots of actions in our in our plan here, and and everybody will get to see them here. It's finding those critical ones that are going to move the dial here, and we can all get behind together. It are going to create that long term impact and, and ensure that, that this sticks and has that lasting impact that we're all looking for. Mark, not uh, Sorry, go ahead. I was just really charged to like Mark's nailed it there, but I. You know, a lot of what this is about, and, and you've you know you've led from the from the front many times. We need to raise the profile of of manufacturing in many respects. Um, hopefully, the the strategy and the delivery plan, and the existence, if you like, and the energy of Makers Alliance will will continue to do that. But it's really sometimes it's about getting in the face of the people who hold the purse strings and make the decisions and and shape the policies, and uh, let them not forget, if you like, that there's that there is a manufacturing bedrock. To our economy unless their eyes are sort of on on other prospects and i think you know just to, to emphasize uh, mark's point you know the the three clusters or collaborative networks of of gemx mega and, and manufacturing task force they're, they're testament to what can be achieved when like-minded companies come together and address problems and challenges and, and they gradually become self-sustaining there's a momentum that that you know, once people gather together, it becomes unstoppable. Mark and I had the, had the um, pleasure of meeting the chief technical officer from an organization called NGEN Canada, 
And this is one of five super clusters, to give it its, its proper name, in Canada, it was set up a number of years ago under the Trudeau government to do just what we're trying to do, to actually create that ecosystem, that landscape where everybody can thrive. And five, seven years on, uh, their accomplishments are, are really quite staggering. So th there's a lot to be learned from, from case studies and examples elsewhere that we can draw inspiration from. But it needs everybody to get engaged. You know, we can't just wait for the minister or for government to take the lead. Industry itself has to avail of the opportunities that are there. We all need to engage with the innovation centers. We need to take the opportunity to collaborate when these networks are set up. And I think that way there is that real coalition of manufacturers that comes forward. And I think you 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 do create this kind of bow wave then and 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 you know it's it does become uh, pretty much unstoppable. And and I think that's I think that's wise advice. Uh, we we've seen it during COVID. Whenever people, given the existential issue that that we were facing as a as an industry and as an economy and as people, for some, uh, that that all the old suspicions fell away really quickly, and people ran towards collaborating with each other, ran towards supporting each other uh, as manufacturers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and, and sometimes we look to government to solve all our problems, but perhaps the problem is easier solved internally by the actions that we would take ourselves as businesses or with our neighbours or colleagues in similar uh, sectors or similar industries. Uh, so it is it is a case of trying to ensure that we that we we do break down those suspicions, those worries, those concerns. Uh, there's a there's a terrible thing in Northern Ireland about never drive a better car than your boss. But that's that's really talks about trying to show don't be showing off your success. Don't be showing off how good you actually are. We're, we're very poor at doing doing that. We're in all the parts of the world who we buy and sell and beat every single time. Uh, they're very overt at, at actually talking about how good they actually are. Uh, so the solutions could be just next door or could already be within our businesses. Uh, I was going to ask you a question just about Will this make a difference? I know it'll make a difference because it's been written by manufacturers themselves. So this is the things that they want and what they need delivered. But who will be doing the delivery? I uh, talked about businesses themselves doing that. We've had a really good presentation from Kelly in terms of the support that Invest in I can provide. But in terms of those kind of six key themes, where do you see those delivery, uh, those those people being responsible for delivery being? Who's going to ensure that stuff around energy or people and skills etc 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 uh, are actually those environments are created that allow us to be successful and so i think the, the, it, when you look at the delivery plan or when people actually take the trouble to have a look at some of the detail um and it will be available to to download from from both invest and hopefully steve from your own website very shortly um you will see that uh, when we actually get toward the end of the document. For each of those themes, there's a fairly detailed action plan. Um, it is prioritized. There are five or six crunchy things that we think need to happen in each case. We've identified those who we believe are our delivery partners. We've identified the kind of actions that need to take place. We've even put um, you know, uh, an estimate of the impact and the time scale against it. So we've tried to actually get it down to the kind of gritty detail that, frankly, if you're running a business, you would, you would want to do with a with a plan and, I, and the existence of makers is there to i guess provide impetus and frankly to conjole to maybe annoy and to and, and to challenge if if we feel like action isn't being taken where we've where we've proposed you know we've we've welcomed frankly the 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 support that we've received so far from from both the minister from his officials and and indeed from within invest i mean we've we, as, I, as i mentioned um, some time ago, we've worked closely in the shaping of this plan, both with those in the Department of the Economy and those in Invest, Kelly's team, who are responsible for advanced manufacturing. And it has been um, refreshing, frankly, to, to have their ears and, and, and to actually get the kind of feedback that we're getting. It does feel like we're at a point in time where people want to be on the same page. And with the advent of these investments through the city and regional growth deals, no one wants to mess up. Everybody wants wants to make a success of this. I mean, historically, we're very good in Northern Ireland at messing things up when we're given an opportunity. I mean, some people would say we're kind of world class 
of fracturing a perfectly good landscape. But actually, I do think there have been massive learnings from the past. And certainly the sense I have, and okay, as, uh, as Mark knows, I'm one of life's eternal optimists, but I actually think, you know, we have great prospects ahead of us. Um, but but yeah, Stephen, it's about makers exercising its strength, its energy, not letting off, not letting people off the hook, uh, challenging where appropriate, calling out uh, duplication or where we see waste of time and money. Um, that's that's the job that, that Mark and I have given ourselves, and uh, that's the background we come from, of course, in industry. And, I, and and you know we we are reminded all the time that you know we are there to be a voice of industry. We are there to take the independent view. So. We're not frightened of, of challenge where appropriate. Stephen, to, to, to add that, two, two quick things. Um, one, um, there will need to be a culture change in, in how people partner, and that's why we keep emphasizing the collaborative piece. We've seen the benefit that an, an industry you know has supply chains that deliver for it. You know, the large companies um, in Northern Ireland have supply chains that do some of the heavy lifting for them. Our big institutions need to recognise that they can't do everything, and um, that takes me to the second point. Then, therefore, they have to be prepared to take a risk. Sometimes things don't work. Sometimes they do. Um, that's what we do in business. We take risks and we invest on the basis of, of of the fact that we think that this is going to give us a return at some stage. Sometimes that happens. Um, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and that's not being blase about it. And I think that's going to be a challenge here for. Um, the, the public sector with the pace that industry is looking to move at now is to where is it prepared to take a risk in partnering with us to deliver what's needed um, whether that's through you know um, how we deliver skills for the sector through to you know the, what we mentioned there around micro production and energy and how, how that could potentially you know be you know essentially devolved in a way that, that creates opportunity and, and, and it enables businesses to grow quicker so the, there's multiple partners, which include government, its agencies, industry itself, uh, and those involved in our supply chain, supply chains, whether those be energy firms or others, uh, they kind of create that environment that we need. I'm going to spend just about five more minutes, a couple of very specific questions. Kelly, I'm going to pitch this one to you, but if you're not the right one to answer, then feel free to pass it on. Uh, has there been any progress on a way forward for those companies that have undertaken the SERI assessments? So in terms of the companies that have undertaken the SERI assessments, their next step is to engage with their client executives to, to work through the project plans that are coming out of SERI. Um, if that's a question, Stephen, specifically in terms of, you know, the, the investments that they'll need to make, the skills, maybe the people that they'll need to bring into the business, um, all of those companies will have the ability to, to avail of all of those supports which I've outlined and more because, you know, we've, we've a lot more support than even just a, a touched on through the, the slides there. Um, but yes, that's that that's the route forward through their client executive um, and on a, on a bespoke basis in terms of, of the one to one where there are um, sort of a lot of commonality. I think we've come through the pilot um, Surrey project and um, we're still um, understanding the commonalities and potentially what support mechanisms we need to put in place as we start to roll out and um, hopefully Surrey on, on, a, on a more widespread basis across Northern Ireland. Great, that, that's really helpful. So there may be certainly in those areas where there are common problems or common interventions required, there may be a new program that's developed by Invest NA to, to support and that. That sounds very positive. You know, you know, Stephen, I don't think it necessarily needs to be a new program. I think a lot of our programs are very, very flexible. It's potentially using them in a in a in a in a different way. I, I think that we have a lot of flexibility. We have a lot of offerings. It's just okay. We've potentially got a a new focus, which we clearly understand now, and and we resource that um focus through our existing programs. I don't necessarily think we need to have any any new programs. I think when we looked across the the offering in terms of what Invest NI has has to match the outcomes coming out and the needs coming out of the Surrey assessments. We nearly, I think we'd every box ticked. It's just, a, it's just a case of potentially deploying resources differently. Excellent, thank you. There's lots of support for simplifying processes, rationalising numbers of programmes. Some concern that actually some of those bigger UK programmes are just really difficult for businesses here to navigate and there's such a competitive feel that it's that they believe it's not worth their their effort uh, we need to do more in that innovation field to get people uh, trying to 
trying to access that money? Is there is there support from Invest and or Mark and Mark from other colleagues in terms of trying to up our performance levels in terms of those UK interventions? I think I'll just take the the, fir the first part of that. So we have a team of of innovation advisors, Stephen, and um, which help companies to prepare, understand calls that are out there, publicise those calls that are that are outside of Northern Ireland. So the big innovate calls, and then also to help companies prepare applications for those calls. I still think that that it is still difficult for companies to do that. You know, it, it's still it's still a very competitive environment. And we need to get better at that. We probably need more innovation advisors within Invest NI. So that whole signposting piece, I think, is really, really important because as the whole environment, the, the funding environment that we understand is complex. Um, it's, I've never seen it as complex, to be honest, in the time that I've been working within economic development. Um, so that signposting piece and that understanding from an Invest NI perspective of what's out there and specifically how it can help companies is, is very much needed. We're looking at uh, we are looking at our own programs in terms of rationalizing them and making them more simple. A lot of it is around messaging rather than actually the actual programs themselves. A lot of it has been able to to maybe couple them together and, and provide you know a, a clear message as to where companies should be signposted to um, and when it's right to signpost them to those to those programs. Um, and from a maker's perspective, Mark and Mark, if, if you have anything further to well, add in that area. We, we have a very specific action we've flagged around that, um, Stephen, um, which is, is that we, we believe, and it builds what Kelly's just said there and, and some of the points you made there, that additional support is needed to exploit the funding that's available. Um, so whether that's some of the organisations that are currently offering support, moving away from being supporters to um, actually enabling um, the businesses to access the wider funds, there, there's a challenge. You know, we are, have been historically poor at, at accessing wider Horizon Europe funding and, and, and UKRI and Innovate UK funding. We can do better, and it's shown that when businesses you know do get the right formula for making an application there and the right support, they 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 are they're winning, and we, then we punch above our weight. So it's about and you know, whether this is for uh, Invest in I and Inter Trade Ireland to work in partnership together or others, but I think there's something there we can do to make sure that our businesses have that opportunity. And, and we've put in there that there should be some sort of partnership structure within two years of various organisations working together to leverage and enable those businesses to, to uh, access more funding. And that's not about creating specific Northern Ireland funds because. In, in a wider UK landscape, we have Metro Mirrors, we have two other devolved nations, all pushing different agendas and different activities there. So we're one part of a landscape, but we can do better there and, and should be doing better. And a lot of it comes down to just giving the right support around writing applications. Or not. That sounds overly simplistic, but it actually is something that keeps coming across time and time again. Very practical support. La last question, and then I'll, I'll finish with a, a, a comment, I suppose. Uh, in terms... Like, Businesses can't grow unless they have access to good, skilled people and labour. Uh, it's the single biggest issue that people right across manufacturing talk about, but not just manufacturing, all other, other industries as well. Uh, what's the Makers Alliance recommending here in terms of that skills environment? Uh, do you think that there's an open door in terms of change in that environment with the, uh, with the department and with the minister? Or do we just have to leave this to businesses themselves to try to resolve? Business, if businesses are left to themselves, or if the academic and, and vocational institutions are left themselves, then we'll get a suboptimal solution. I, I personally believe I think what Mark and I are recommending here is that business is in the driving seat, Stephen, that, that we have that voice to lead that. How that looks or how that develops could be could take many different forms. We're suggesting potentially a specific manufacturing subgroup to the Skills Council. That would require probably the Skills Council to, to be reformatted or have certain strengths in different ways. We're also saying, look, industry needs to have a greater input as MEGA has had around the development of degree apprenticeships and the future of the wider apprenticeship structure. Um, however, companies are generally best placed to do that sort of last mile training, we will every business will have specific and different needs, and it has they have to be enabled about that. And that's where we're talking about you know where the value and we want to have a real serious conversation about a learning factory. Is the learning factory the right way to do this and move this forward, either in a large scale aggregated basis or in smaller bases within individual sectors or individual businesses? 
the colleges will have a key part to play. The universities will have a key part to play. But technology is moving very fast. And if businesses are the ones that are making those big investments and the long term investments, then the training is probably going to be best take place in those businesses. But there are going to be cost cutting pieces of skill set. There's going to be problem solving skills. There's going to be data analytics skills. There's going to be the basic use of AI, the basic use of robotics that they can learn outside the business and then be business ready. And that's probably what we're looking for from our colleges and universities, folk that are business and ready, that are employees that are ready to step into the workplace. They won't have all the technical skills. And then how does government and industry work together to deliver the, the technical skills that are needed? Thanks, Mark Nodder. I'll finish with yourself. Uh, how would you like people to engage with this report that you're, you're, you're pub an action plan that you're publishing today? Uh, where can people see it? And uh, what actions would you like to see our manufacturing community taken on the back of this? Thanks, Stephen. We'd like everybody, hopefully, who's attended today and, and uh, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll share with the wider kind of manufacturing community just to take 20 minutes or half an hour to have a look at the document. It's not a, it's not a big read. Um, it's, it's, I hope, in fairly sort of short, simple, pointed terms. Um, you'll be able to download it. Uh, from from Invest and I, from hopefully your your own website, Stephen, and we're we're in the process of setting up a LinkedIn page. In the meantime, you can grab a hold of Mark or I through LinkedIn. We both have profiles online, so there's a number of different ways you can get yourself a PDF copy, uh, and we've got some hard copies that are in in store at Invest and I. So lots of ways we can actually get the document to you. Hopefully, the document does resonate with people. I mean, we didn't set out to achieve let's say academic perfection with this document. We tried to bring the industry view, the industry influence, hopefully on, on those in government and other agencies that are actually writing and shaping policy. Um, we, we will continue to, to act for industry uh, along with yourself, Stephen. We will supplement, if you like, your voice with, with some of the ammunition. Uh, with the help of Michael Ryan and the panel, we'll call out things that we feel are inappropriate or wasteful. Um, so in, in that sense, you know, the work is only beginning and it is, it is, we recognize this as being a long term journey. But frankly, the more people we can get on board in whatever shape or form, the better. Um, we would love to see uh, the clustering activity of, of Mega Gem X and, and Manufacturing Task Force uh, increase and maybe other places and other sectors uh, try to actually form similar kinds of networks to create that, that, that momentum and that sort of bow wave. But, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're not a closed shop. We're very open. Uh, so anybody that wants to follow up on these conversations can uh, reach out through LinkedIn um, or through, through your website or through Invest, get themselves a copy of the document and, uh, and become part, hopefully, of this change process. Excellent, Mark. Uh, thanks to you, Mark Huddleston, and particularly Kelly, uh, for coming online with us today. We will share the presentation. We will share the recording. We will share the document uh, when, there, when there's a link available for us to do that. We continue to play a very active role in the Makers Alliance. We're, we're keen to do that. I think it's been very valuable work to date. Uh, part of that change process means that we, we all run towards uh, the actions that are required and hold to account those that we need to help hold the account to ensure that that delivery comes through. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we'll share everything, as I said, after the event. And best of luck with the rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Bye. Stephen.